Hi. This lesson is in two parts. I want to start talking about um, this place, uh, Viant. What you're looking at here is uh, a drone picture of an arch dam. But oddly, there's no water here. This dam stands as uh, uh, a memorial, I suppose, for one of the worst geological disasters, um, and by which I mean a disaster caused by poor geological work um, that's ever happened. What I want to do with this is to use this as a mass movement case study to show you what happens when um, geologists get things wrong and it's a, a, a lesson that we should uh, take on to this day okay uh, the Viant Dam uh, is in northern Italy uh, in a chain of mountains called the Dolomites um, in late 1963, uh, not long after the dam had, uh, had been built and just after the dam had been filled, um, there was a huge landslide. That landslide uh, moved uh, a large mass of material down into the, the filled reservoir. That displaced the water that's in the reservoir, pushed it over the top of the dam, and that water then uh, catastrophically flooded the valley downstream um, of the dam. The dam itself, strangely, was barely damaged. The surrounding area, though, certainly couldn't say the same thing about. This is an image of the village or the town of Longarone uh, after the disaster uh, and really it was only the church tower that was still standing. There is a video documentary that goes with this lesson um, that's well worth watching. This is uh, the site after the disaster. Uh, you can see the dam in the bottom left there. You can see perhaps why the dam uh, was built in this location. Um, but behind it then you see the catastrophic result of um, failing to take account of the geology. Behind the dam should be a very long deep valley. What we have instead is a mass of moved rock. As I said, the dam still sits there. Um, this is the villa This is a photo taken from this town of Longarone. You can see from this image very clearly um, the size of the dam that was built, how tall it was, how wide it was. You can see perhaps as well uh, why they chose the, uh, an arch dam design for it. Um, in many ways, this is a superb place for a dam. However, in one key way, it really wasn't. This is the map of uh, the area. You can see uh, where the dam is. You have a, a black and white version of this map. You can see the, uh, the dam mark there with the small black curve. And it gives you an indication why um, engineers at the time wanted to build a dam in this location you know it's high up in the mountains um, you've got for the building of what's well, so actually a very small dam uh, relatively speaking we've got an enormous body of water that stretches back kilometers behind it uh, with the ability to store a vast amount of water 
uh, either to provide um, a water supply or even hydroelectric uh, power because it's so high. There was a key weakness though. And it was a weakness that the people uh, in the valley, uh, you can see where Longaroni there's, there is on the, the far left of this diagram. Uh, each of those black dots represents uh, a town or village and the red line uh, shows the limit of the flooding. We need to think about what the causes of this disaster were. As geologists, could, the, could this have been predicted? Was it a, an accident waiting to happen? Or was it um, something that couldn't possibly have been foreseen? If you look at the figures, uh, it's fairly staggering. 300 million cubic metres of mountain uh, of rock moving into uh, the reservoir really very quickly. Um, that movement of rock displaced water in the lake, or in the reservoir, should I say, uh, and created a, a wave that's been estimated at 200 to 250 metres high going over the top of the dam. This was uh, then travelling down a uh, hill at 80 kilometres an hour, 50 miles an hour. Um, water moving that quickly is going to be immensely destructive. We've seen the picture of, the, of what it would do to the village. But the property damage is only part of the story. There's a death toll of 2,600 people. Uh, it's often called the worst disam dam disaster in history. And the impact of this is still ongoing. So the question we need to ask as geologists is why did it occur and could it have been uh, predicted? What I'd like you to do is I'd like you to have a look at all the data on the Viant um, Dam uh, data sheet that I've given you as part of your resource bank. I'd like you to annotate that data. What can we see about the lithology of these rocks that might indicate uh, there's a potential problem? What issues are there with the geological structure of the rocks here? What issues are there with, well, as always, the water? What is it about the water here that may have uh, had an effect? Uh, is there anything as well about the history of this that should have set uh, a warning? So look at all that data, uh, annotate that data, see what you come up with. Can you identify the causes of this? So, have a go at that now. Put yourself in the shoes uh, of an engineering geologist um, involved in the, in the run-up in the construction or the planning of this dam. What would you have identified as hazards? And what could be done about it? Have a go at that now.